All the basic features that I want in my MVP. Okay, so really let's talk about mood boards. These are like your app's personality. This is what I want my app to feel like. Now for prototype, your app's first play day, you can start simple. We can have paper sketches or wireframes. Using just pen and paper. Or you can go more professional, do it on Figma. Build click-through mockups or interactive screens. You don't need perfection, just something you can hold, share, and test. All right, honey, this is where you actually start building something. Just enough so someone else can try it out. Testing prototypes validates usability, messaging, and the overall UX. And last step is iteration. Test it, tweak it, test it again. Little by little, polish it until it feels just right. And following this exact process from a YouTube video, I'll put the link in my description if you want to check it out yourself. This guy has like a lot of pretty cool stuff on designing apps, so like you should definitely check out his channel. All right, here I'm making the mood board and finding design inspo for every feature I want to include. But before that, disclaimer, jumping straight into designing your app isn't the smartest move. First, you need a crystal clear picture of how it's actually going to work. I'm talking about the brain of your app, the algorithm behind your key selling point. Like if you're building something like Uber, what makes you better? Is it a smarter way to negotiate prices or better driver allocation? You figure that out first. Then you design your app around it. In this video, I'm mostly showing the journaling draft of my core functions and then the design process, but I want you to remember before the pretty colors and layouts, get your logic logged in. Your algorithm is the foundation. Design is just the house you build on top. Okay, so I was exploring all the AI builders. Hi. I am so confused right now because I like searched on ChatGPT and stuff. Why do I look so f out? I took a fat nap. I'm gonna have coffee again, but if I have coffee, then I'm not gonna be able to sleep at night early. And you know, I'm also like hustling on my strength and bodybuilding as you can see like 
If you cannot see it, it's your fault. You are the problem. Anyways, so back to the topic. So I also asked ChatGPT and I searched and I like looked through YouTube to see what AI builders people usually use for mobile app development. ChatGPT said that Firebase Studio, the AI agent that I was leaning on, is not really that efficient and it also generates app in Next.js. As you know, we are using React Native. So bye-bye Firebase Studio. It also said that Firebase only produces web applications and not mobile applications. It gave me a few other AI agents that are like leading in app building. First is Apakela, which is now renamed to Kiki. Then we have Bold, and then we have Draftbit. It gave me like three more. They were like Glide, Flutter, Flow, not interested. But I can like prototype an app. I can build like an MVP on the on these AI agents for free. But if I want to publish the app and I want to go live and you know have a backend and whatever, whatever, I need to pay for a subscription. The subscription is, well, if the app really turns out to be mm -mm -mm, then I would love to invest in it. I didn't really tell you the idea of the app, did I? I'll tell you later. Let's have this uh, AI agent discussion first. I asked ChatGPT, oh, what if we do like everything ourselves? What if I code the app myself? And by myself, like we obviously know that it's going to take enormous amount of time if I do that myself. So I can like take help of ChatGPT or Claude for faster code generation and stuff, right? So technically, I would need to just pay for the publication of my app. So ChatGPT also gave me a few uh, advantages of that. If I decide to code the app myself, then I can dramatically cut the costs while still building a high quality market ready app. For that, I would basically have to, I'll be using React Native with Expo. We can use a Firebase backend, uh, which includes authorization, Firestore and storage. We'll be using media sharing and we will be using real-time chat. I am, to give you like the gist of it, uh, we're gonna build an app similar to Snapchat. But it's not like Snapchat at all, but like the features, like it's for communication, it's a social app, but it's like a very good app. <laughs> to be honest, I want to build that app for me because this is something that I'm going to face in the future. So I'm like, oh my God, that's like a real problem. And like, what are people doing about this problem? Well, they're doing something, but that something is not good enough. So I thought, um, yeah, that's not going to work for me. So. You know what? I'm just gonna build it myself. Estimated monthly cost breakdown that ChatGPT gave me if I do it myself would be Firebase has a free tire. It includes authorization and mm, storage and hosting. Expo is free. EAS build is optional. I don't know what EAS is. I think it's okay. AP. Okay. I don't know what that is. App developer account and Google Play Console. Like if you want to publish your app on Google Store and App Store, you gotta pay a fee. For uh, Android, it's $24, uh, $25, it's a one-time fee. And for the iOS, it's $99 per year. So it's like a subscription. Just because it's cheap in money, it does not mean that it's cheap in labor. The cost is gonna cost you one way or another. What I would need to build manually includes user authorization, user profiles, real-time chat, image, video upload, push notifications, navigation, tabs, unload screens, Firebase security rules, ES build, and store submission. <sighs> but the thing is, I would own my code completely. But the truth is, the same function that I can do using an AI in five minutes would require two to four hours if I do it manually. To build that little invoice generator, we took three weeks just for one website that had like literally one thing to do. This, this app, if I do it myself, it's gonna take me like six months or so. And I don't wanna wait six months. 
I want to earn money right now. You have to understand, my goal is not to find a job in app development. I really want a job at a very big company. So like me writing every single code is literally my practice session and I'm gonna get really good at it. That's not my goal. I don't want to get a job, bro. I want to make money from the apps I make. I don't want to go to office every day. What I'm thinking is what if we like code ourselves, right? But we use AI like ChatGPT and Claude to get the code. But that's also gonna take a lot of time. So you know what I am thinking, what we can do at this moment right now? We're gonna try and use a balanced path, okay? We're gonna build an MVP and we're gonna get it out, publish it on the market. We're gonna start shifting to coding the app ourselves and basically rebuild the code in React Native. If the app is successful, we can get more people on board and we can make it a real thing this week right now we're obviously going to keep learning react native and i'm going to i need to make a layout first of the app i need to get down all the basic features that i want in my mvp and then i'm gonna generate a prompt and then i'm going to put that prompt in all of these ai builders even on chat gpt and see which one is giving me better and faster results. I am reinstating the Founders Pyre ceremony.